Hey, welcome back to the Backyard Professor Chess videos. I have a wonderful couple of games from members of the BYP Chess Fan Club on Leeches. Now, I've heard it pronounced both ways, and I'm being told I am a complete moron if I pronounce Leeches as Leeches. So from now on, I don't give a flying a flip what anyone else says. I'm going to call it Leeches, okay? The chess site, L-I-C-H-E-S-S. -S. I think he called it that just to be controversial, <laughs> right? Yeah, baby. That's called genius, man. And his chess website's phenomenal. Phoenix714. One of our upper echelon members who turns in more wins in his chess games than Santa Claus has presents on Christmas Eve, man. This guy is really good. F-E-N-I-K-S 714. The club salutes you, my friend. Here is a game he played with the French defense. He explained a little bit of what he was thinking about and his rationale for doing what he did, and it was just really instructive and very, very helpful for the rest of us in our club, whom everyone is invited to come and join in on the fun and the rollicking bravado and the showing off of your games and the lamenting and woes and lamentations of your losses and so on and so forth. We're having a great time. Many, many people are starting to get in it. It's about 220 of us right now. Yeah, you guys, we're having fun. We're playing online as fast as we can. We're enjoying it thoroughly. Although I have to confess, that's probably a little white lie because I don't enjoy thoroughly getting trounced all the time in chess. However, you guys are awesome, man, I'm telling you. You're keeping me on my toes. Here, Phoenix's opponent is putting the crap on him. Ugh. And that's actually kind of a typical motif in the French. It is. They'll usually do this just to drive you nuts because what it does is it just it just makes it hard to develop your king side and castle. Yeah? Hard to get central space. Now, your center isn't weak here as such, but it's just, you know, it's annoying, so knock it off. Unless, of course, unless, of course, you're playing white, and then do it, and just bug the heck out of your opponent. <laughs> oh. Sorry, I'm supposed to be acting professional. So, if you will, observe, people. The E5 has put a cramp into the center of the black pieces. But do you think Phoenix gives a flip about that? Heck no. Watch how he manhandles this. This is wonderful. C5. Yes. In the French, you, you don't mind the, uh, the, D, or the E6 and the D5. But you really like the c5 because what you're doing is you're going to gain space on the queen side for the simple reason that it's not weak, but your center is cramped. Oh, white has more central space. So, in the French, you claim the queen side space and go to town. Good just good solid basic chess here. Now don't think White's just gonna let you mow over him. Of course not. He's gonna play hard too. And so here we go. The nice thing about the C5 bump is now you can get your punk. Uh, the French bishop, yeah, the, the white squared bishop, uh, he got a little bit of a tough time coming out in most of the variations of the French. This is the one that if you can trade off, because he's going to be your bad bishop, then you really do want to trade him off. Or if you can find a way to get him outside the pawn chain, you can do that. 
Or I have seen games in the French where they have waited until uh, the end of the middle game, actually, toward the ending, and then all of a sudden, this guy can, if you play it right, become an absolute monster. But in the French, for the black, this is your problematic piece, there's no question about it. This expansion of the queenside space helps you put this bishop to its best potential so far. Yeah, just, just to be aware of this. Knight f3, okay, here we go. And bishop d7. And bishop d3. Now, observe that the d4 pawn is going to be sacrificed. It's not going to stay. White's theme here, his idea in not worrying about the pawn, in other words, it's not uh, critical for him to keep the center closed. He will hand over the pawn so that he can develop his pieces faster and it will give him an initiative to an attack. That's the idea here. Just keep that in mind and we'll, we'll show you as it goes forward here. So the C does take the D4. Yeah. And the C does take the D4. Yeah. Notice the, the file is open. And now the queen to the B6 going on the queen side. And where are you? No, 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 no. Sorry. Queen. Cow. Wake the heck up. Did I do this backwards? Bishop to d3. Then c takes d4. Black. And then white. C takes d4, and then queen b6. The queen, the black queen, is on b6, you moron, professor. Get it right, you chumply. And bishop comes to c2. Now, here is Phoenix observation. He says, now look, uh, the idea white uh, sacrificed the pawn on d4... He gave that up. It basically opened a file uh, for someone who's really on the ball here to get that file to get into their opponent's camp. But now he's moving his bishop again. He's moving it twice. He is not developing his pieces fast. He is not gaining the initiative. He hasn't picked up the tempo. He is not at all pressuring black's queen side, let alone doing anything at all for the king side, and the middle is just, boink, just stuck. So white is playing uh, not the best, according to Phoenix. And here is what he, he says, I am going to, the, the way he brought the bishop out was good, the way he's bumping it back is not so good, but it is the most active, most powerful piece of the white camp. So that's the target. I love how Phoenix thinks, right? Target. He's going to exchange white's best piece. That makes sense, doesn't it? Right. Yes. How is he going to do that? Might be for because of the way that white allowed the exchange of the pawns on d4, he is able to bring his knight here and exchange the best piece white has. So his idea of sacrificing the pawn to get more pieces faster into this game has not materialized. Phoenix being heads up takes advantage of that and says, ah, get rid of his best pizza. Absolutely. This is great chess, you guys. Pay attention to this. This is good. So 
White does get to castle, and yeah, Knight takes the best piece that White had developed at this point with great joy. Yeah, and then Queen will take the Knight, and bingo, Rook on open file, beautiful target. Yeah, center's locked, so see, not in the seat. It's hard in some respects to fault uh, White because the center is locked. And when the center's locked, what you want to do is you want to rearrange your pieces and try to get them on optimal squares or else in the ma maximum uh, uh, connection, coordination, or whatever. But Phoenix did not see White doing that, and neither did we. And so Phoenix took advantage of that, and now his advantage has grown into the initiative. And now he's getting some powerful position. So this is good to watch. This is real interesting to watch. Knight c3. So White is bringing up material to uh, develop, but at this point, Phoenix says Black should have no problem with the game. The position is such that Black has it. He just has to watch his P's and Q's, dot his T's, and cross his I's. <sighs> Not those eyes, you idiot. Cross your T's and dot your I's. That's what I meant to say. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. Stop goofing around, dude. We got some serious crap to go through here. Okay, so knight c3, knight e7. Here come the troops. So, queen 2, d3, and knight 2, f5. Good post, man. No kidding. Good post shutting off the uh, lane for the queen to, to influence the uh, black king side if and when he decides he has to castle. The center being locked, since there is no real uh, traffic movement, uh, he didn't feel the need that it was important to castle very early. Nothing's coming after him. His bringing the knight out actually prevents the flow of energy that direction. So Phoenix isn't doing bad at all, and he is getting a full development, just like White is now starting to act like he wants to get serious about getting going with all of his pieces. But Black's on him. Black is on him. G4, hit the target. Yeah, I see that post, great post. Not a permanent one, but a good post. Phoenix's comment here is worth understanding. It's not a permanent post. Is it worth weakening the king side to make that big of a stabbing leap, or a leaping stab, I should say, at the knight to get it off the post? That, that's what white uh, had to weigh back and forth. Is it really worth really clobbering my position. I mean, look, the, the F-pawn is never going to make it up into here to, to support these guys. You have to move the knight away and then the F, and by then, who knows where Phoenix is going to be. He's going to be down in downtown L.A. partying after dancing on this guy's head, right? Avoid good-looking moves if you can, but uh, weakening moves like this hurt. Now, watch how Phoenix handles this. The knight will come back to e7. Yeah, so he made him hop back one. Okay, nice. Knight g5. See, it's looking... I mean, the bishop behind here. The queen behind here. Yeah, baby. Here we come, Bubba. However, hold on. h6. Much less dramatic. Much less weakening than that g4 sword. Yeah. And now knight h7. Yeah. I mean, come on. White's ambitious. He he wants to have a king side. And I know, man, in a lot of my online chess games, 
I mean, thank goodness I've made good friends with some of the real good chess players because they kind of hamper, pamper me, you know, they, they put up with my silly shenanigans. <laughs> I ask them, hey, do you mind if I try something here? And if it doesn't work out, will you give me a couple of take back moves, you know? And I'm always trying to throw something at the king side, you know? Yeah, let's see, let's do a knight sacrifice here. Take the G pawn with the bishop, you know, throw a queen out there and a rook and all that. And I'm trying to see through experiment what works and what doesn't. And I know these guys on the other side are saying, Oh boy, it's the professor again. He's gone nut job on us. Okay, let him have his stupid tinkering experiment, and then we'll play real chess. But it helps to experiment. So thank you all my wonderful online chess friends who tolerate me. <laughs> Put up with me and you're laughing behind my back. I can't blame you, crap. I'd laugh at me too. But sometimes... You put two and two together. White just couldn't do that. And let's see why. Let's see why. Black has two very pleasant options. Yeah, rook on the open file, you guys. Target. Oh, of course. I mean, yeah. And the 8-7 now. Yeah, the queen's here, but here's the guess. Here, uh, the guess. Here's the gist. In the French, Phoenix says a very common theme is to lose the exchange, that is, give up the exchange, that is, exchange a rook for a knight or a rook for a knight. Sometimes the rook will exchange with a bishop. Lose the exchange in the French to get rid and help get rid of the central pawns and it works for you. So the knights are covered, right? By the same piece. Ooh, overworked piece. A lovely little lady right there. But that shouldn't stop you from saying, I'm still going to take one of them as well as attack the central pawns. Because in the French, if you have an opportunity to sacrifice the exchange and then get rid of a pawn or two in the center, just do it. Don't calculate. Don't sweat the material. It'll probably end up being a rook you use. Use it! So let's see, let's see how that works. That's so interesting. He chose this one. All right, way to go, Phoenix. Sacrifice the exchange on uh, h7, which is kind of unusual. It was kind of fun. There were there were some comments by some of the other club members in the forum where uh, Phoenix showed this game and they're like, yeah, that that was a fun exchange sacrifice. But wow, what a weird place for it. In the French, it's usually uh, elsewhere. But so on the a7, what the heck? And Queen takes h7. So. He lost the exchange. Now watch how this works. Typical theme in the French. Now watch what he does. He lost the exchange. Rook for the knight. But it decentralized the queen. Now he can come in here and take one of the central pawns. This is a typical French Defense, exchange, sacrifice that you want to get used to. It's standard, excellent ideas. Let's see this further. Bishop e3. He is centralizing the bishop. Yeah. Phoenix didn't like this move at all. And he'll show us why. He is hitting the target. Yeah. And he's got the... Uh, I mean, come on, he's got the pawn at a7, Phoenix, you fussy, cotton-picking guy. All right, but hold up. Here's why, here's why strategically. Now, he's, he's thinking correctly. His attitude, his idea, you cannot fault. He wants to develop. Look, he's got two pieces here undeveloped. Who has all their pieces in here? Stand up and take a bow, Phoenix. We salute you. Yeah! He put all of his pieces into this game, you guys. 
who has two undeveloped pieces, uh, that'll catch you with a guy like Phoenix. Okay, so let's not fault White for doing a developing move in the center on a decent post, hitting a target. That's good. However, that's the more important part of his position that he should be worrying about. Not the D four square. <laughs> Dang it. He's focusing on the wrong area. Here is where he needs to protect. And let's let Phoenix guide us into this. This is really interesting. Well, yeah. See, White did hit the target. White did develop into the center. He does have another target over here to get it so he has the pawn majority but he's not going to last that long to get into the end game. <laughs> Unfortunately, because of that incredible leap by the G pawn earlier, just to acquire a target. Unfortunately, it was behind the castled king, and those pawns, unless you have the ability to push all of them together with in conjunction and coordination with pieces, that would be okay. But the single solitary warrior jumping as far as he can just to make a target move, this is the consequence. It is a disastrous weakness that's fatal. And this is really cool to observe. So King H1, Watch, Queen F3, targets, mostly just the king, though, right? King G1, Rook C4. Notice where he put the Rook, you guys. This was kind of cool, too. Because earlier... Earlier he was talking about his target being the knight on c3, when he had the uh, option of the knight on h7, or the other knight on the c3, now he hits c4. Why? He didn't take his target and lose the exchange. Why? He has already done an exchange sacrifice. He has already, in conjunction with the exchange sacrifice, that is, he lost the exchange, that's why it's an exchange sacrifice, he took a lesser value piece, the knight, with the more valuable piece, the rook, and a central pawn. And because he exchanged the sacrifice, and broke through the locked center. I mean, here he is. Here he is. He has broken through the locked center. He'll win. That is just so cool to see in the French how this works. And you'll notice, just as an observation, this wonderful idea, and I'm not following him for the move. I'm following him for where it went. Unfortunately, it was the wrong spot. But you notice even that good of a move on, on a good post, hitting a fat drill, taking a huge swath and all that, that has no effect because it doesn't help where the weaknesses are around the king. Phoenix has this down pat. The queen, way off over here, she hasn't had a chance to move and come back in here. She really needs to. Okay, okay, so let's keep looking. Rook c4, yes, absolutely. Rook f to d1. Okay, so the rooks are going to come in here and try to hold the foam, pal. Knight to uh, f5. The knight comes back out on the post. Very, very nice. And, and look, now's the best time for that knight. 
on that post. Yes, it came out earlier and it got hit by a weakness, but it doesn't have another pawn to hit it. It's already past the post. This pawn is gone. This pawn is passed. Now this is a permanent post for the night. It is in a sweet spot and someone's rudely interrupting me while I'm making my Backyard Professor Chess video. I'm gonna cuss someone out. What do you want? Oh, it's my mother. Ooh, hang on, I gotta take this call. This is important. Mama's calling, woohoo. She's checking on her baby boy. Yeah, baby, when mama calls, you listen. Yeah, well, anyway, you know, big shot Backyard Professor, but when mama calls, the video pauses. <laughs> Mamas are important. Okay, mine did not let me grow up to be a cowboy. She heard the song. Okay, so the entire group of pieces are coming into this. Very properly so. White is putting up as stiff a defense as he knows how. Rook to d3, giving support all the way across. Up. He's trying, he really is trying. However, knight takes the bishop. Kablam. At, well, it's the, uh, not only is it the position, but it is due to the glaring weakness of the white king that black can exchange to advantage. Be his position is not as threatened at all as the White King is. So it is entirely to his advantage to change a defender. Swap. And so this is what we see him doing. And the Rook takes, hitting the Queen. Rook to G4. Black is on the attack. He has the initiative. He has the oomph. There's no reason at this point to react to the threat when he has a much stronger threat with yet two pieces. Once again, emphasizing that horribly weak, <laughs> the entire column, the horribly weak squares, which Phoenix is possessing with pieces in the attack. That's nice. That is spot on. Uh, the game is, for all intents and purposes, over. Sincerely, you can see that. And now Queen H1. Yeah. And King E2. And Queen will zippity do da zippity a. My oh my, what a rook taking day. No, he didn't sing that to me. That's my invention of what Phoenix was saying in his heart. Anyway, takes A1. It's just, it's absolutely over. Now, he's attempting to block the power that he has on his own first rank, which is Black's eighth rank, but he just can't do it. And notice, you guys, notice where the queen is all this time. She just hasn't had a chance. Because Phoenix was sharp enough Keep on your toes. Keep the initiative. Keep hitting the weak area. Keep attacking. Keep finding the targets. The main piece could not come back. Interesting good lesson for us in our attacks, isn't it? Yeah, very cool. Knight D1 is trying to stop that shuffling back and forth, and Phoenix just simply says, oh, well, in that case, I'll wipe out this side. <laughs> I mean, wow. And now the queen gets to come back here, but it's too little too late, because watch. Like the knight exchanging with the bishop here, so now the queens can exchange. Because of the weaknesses, it is entirely to black's benefit to swap the queens. White should not swap the queens. But she has no choice. None whatsoever. And so 
D takes C4, and here right Lee White resigned. The, uh, I believe he said, yeah, yeah, he resigned at that point. What a fantastic game. So the BYP Chess Fan Club once again recognizes a signal and important contribution of our chess knowledge in our forum where we pick probably once a week, once every other week or so, we're going to pick and select a few games that are just really choice and instructional for us in the club and for you guys out here as I make videos for them. You can get a double whammy if you come and join the club on Lee Chess. Don't tell me I'm a monkey's uncle. Even though I might be. <laughs> you never know. You know, you know. Anyway, thanks for watching my Backyard Professor Chess videos. We're having a ball. We're doing it. We're, we're learning. We're growing. We're developing. We're expanding our knowledge. Yes, I agree with you entirely. It's not fast enough. That's too bad. Our humanity keeps a lid on things for a while. <sighs> Probably to keep us humble. So, I mean, we've got no choice. Because every one of us can win at chess. And trust me... Every one of us can lose it, Chess, so it's a balance. But you know what? We are making so many cock-eyed, cool online friends in the world. It doesn't matter whether you win or lose. We are having a ball just learning together. So, Anyway, be good to have fun. Thanks, work hard, sleep well, drink lots of water, ah, throw in an orange juice every now and then, and... Okay, before I close out this video, I do have one more game that one of our uh, club members shared with us on our forum. This is by Vampir Toza. This is the Sicilian defense, the Khan variation with a wing attack. At the BYP Chess fan club on Lee Chess, we're serious when we say chess is a team effort. Yeah, we love to share with each other, improve our knowledge, play games together, beat the snot out of each other in chess, and then turn around and get the snot beat out of us with a variation or an opening that we don't know. And then we say, whoa, I've never seen that before. How did you do that on me? And then we share it in the forum, and I get to share it with you guys. That's what it's all about right there, man. That's what makes the world go round. Yeah, chess. Well, love too. I'll give love a... A, a lowly second place, but chess, ooh. Well, what a fanatic. What a fanatic! Liar! Okay, E4. Let's see how Vampir Toza, who is playing white, did this really excellent Sicilian. He did a bang-up job. I've been playing him uh, steady regular since I've gotten online with him. I'm not quite sure how many times he's swapped me, but I've swapped him a couple of times, and so... We're still playing hard, and so it, it's thrilling to uh, to share this uh, success story with one of our club members in a Sicilian defense that is so well done. D4, hitting the center, yeah, and C takes the D4, attacking the center right back. Black is not intimidated. That is the typical standard way you do this. The knight will take the pawn, of course. Has nothing to do with intimidation. It's all book, but man, how glorious it all sounds. <laughs> Whatever. Come on, dude. Okay, here we go. A6. <laughs> Too much fun, man. Knight C3. Here comes Vampir Toza. I love his handle, Vampir Toza. V-A-M-P-I-R-T-O-Z-A. Vampir Toza. Vampir Toza. Vampir Fingers. Oh, I have no idea why he calls it. It's, yeah, whatever. Shut up and show us the game, man. Show us the game, I ask you. So, black is picking up on the uh, queen side. Vampire has the center, uh, you know, pretty much under control. The nice thing is it's with the knight. Both of his knights are placed such that he also really does have decent control, at least with pieces, on the, uh, the queen side. So this is not a bad opening uh, for Vampire. And look at this. Supporting it with the knight, or the knight, the pawn, the pawn push. Nice, and his opponent's going to be in kiddo. Vampire is going to be in kiddo. Very nice. 
And now he's pushing the B4 even harder. So, see, his opponent is acquiring targets, is he not? Yeah, targets. Very good, very good. Knight C to E2. It's okay. He wants to rearrange his pieces anyway. It's kind of nice how he does this. And he's got that long fin kettle, and he is going to zap that central pawn. Ooh, that's a little jewel, man. That's not bad. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, he'll bump the f3. Bishop zips back to d7. He's doing some pawn snatching. That dirty rat! That's all right. Keep developing, and which he does. Knight f6. Block is also still developing. King side push. Got to gain a little space. Black appears to have more space on the queen side, but he doesn't seem to be doing a lot with uh, getting something going on the queen side, does he? Yeah, so let's see if Vampire can, can do something on the king side. If that's his aim, he is pushing some pawns. He hasn't castled king side, so it's safe. Uh, at this Well, so long as he's not being attacked through the center then there's nothing wrong with pushing your pawns and make a pawn roller. Absolutely. Go for it, man. Yeah. And knight g5. Hit the target. This particular target, being the guardian of the castled kingside, although black hasn't castled either, neither one of them have castled, but this particular target is a real good one to hit. If you can get rid of him, and, and that doesn't matter if it's for uh, black or white. Man, if you can get rid of that knight, that's a feather in your cap, right? So, nice target. Now, isn't it interesting that the last game, the previous game, it was the thrust of the G-pawn to hit a target on the F5 that was the fatal weakness that caused the downfall of white. So how come Vampire Toza is doing essentially the same pawn thrust, but getting away with it? He hasn't castled his king yet. So it's not a fatal weakness. It becomes a missile that's acquiring target valuable targets that is going to change the position of black in such a way that white can take advantage of it. That's the difference. It's real interesting to see this. No kidding. Knight to d5. He does centralize. Nice post. Not permanent, but nice little post for the moment. Watch this. Queenside castle. Grab the d file with your rook. It's a partial, but grab it anyway. Bishop to e7. So we're seeing the steam get going here. Everybody's coming out to play in the yard. Let's play kick the can and kill the king. <laughs> in other words, chess. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, here we go. H4. Upon roller. Definitely a kingside attack. F6. He's going to try like crazy to hold it off. At this point, he says... Hold it, man! What are you doing? What are you doing? And then knight takes c6. And bishop takes c6. That bishop, that's been a useful little squirt, hasn't it? Hadn't been a bad little piece. What? Bishop takes c6. And now g takes f6. Yeah, here we go. He's going to crack. Open the king side, even though the king is not castled there. Bishop takes f6, and h5, he, see, the difference uh, between the previous game and this game, um, our hero, Phoenix, was playing the black pieces, this time our hero, Vampire Toza, is playing the white, but notice the difference in the strategy between Vampire Toza's uh, use of his pawns to keep pushing and keep hitting targets and keep black on the back of his heels, and to wreck his position a little bit, compare that to the previous game and uh, how White did it. He, he did it wrong. 
one just sickening stab that created the weaknesses that then Black attacked. Notice Vampire Toza is not getting attacked here. He is doing the attacking. Very nice, Vampire. Quite a difference between the two. And it's for all essential purposes, except for the castling side, the same principles involved. Just a different strategic use of them. Good to see. Good to know. I just wanted to point that out, because that really is uh, important. And now Bishop G5, target. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Woohoo! Okay, here I am ranting and raving about Vampire Toza. Yeah, baby! Great strategy. Doing the attack, and then all of a sudden, Black throws a tactic like that. Wouldn't that just be the end of the excitement and game? And throw away your pom poms and pull down your mini skirt? You've had it. You're done cheering, man. You blew it, dude. But this is a backyard professor chess club fan member. So let's watch what he does. Let's just watch. F4. Ooh, nice. Nice. Knight will take the F4. But again, obstructing the bishop. And now Knight will take F4. Again, obstructing that bishop. And now E5. Hitting the pinned piece. I mean, come on, give Black his due. He is having some real cool tactics. Pin the piece, pin the queen to the king, then pin the, the blockading piece to try to save the queen, and then attack the pinned. Come on, that's good. Not bad, man. Vampire Toza does not just have a one year old here he's playing. No, this is pretty good. He's got some stiff competition, and let's watch how he handles this. Now, remember the Fianchetto Bishop that none of us paid attention to because it's just abiding its time? Now it's time for it to shine like a star. Blam! Fantastic! <laughs> what a great way to thwart fabulous tactics! Just pure Blunt position, power, and timing. <laughs> Vampire tells it, when I grow up, I want to play just like you, buddy. That is wonderful. So, okay, come on, you got a castle. Yeah, you got a castle. I agree. It's time to castle, brother. Uh, now, yeah, you know, bishop to, wait a minute, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, C. Oh, I was going to say, man, my C looked like an E. I've got to learn how to watch that, man. I get that little curly cue. Yeah, bishop to C4 check is correct. Bishop to E4, I was going, wait a minute, bishop to E4, he can't do that. And that's my check anyway. <laughs> oh, the hazards of being in a backyard melon head. And king goes to H8. And... Knight to G6, check. He advanced his pawns. Yeah, sure. The idea that Toza correctly did, in my opinion, is he didn't just leave him here. He threw him at the king side to shake up the position and all. He's still got them in an excellent position. Now he can use them as anchors to continue on his attack. That's a great illustration, you guys. Seriously. That's worth watching several times. I love how he does this. This is a great, a great lesson. H takes G6. The classic knight sacrifice, and now the classic Discovered check. H takes G6. Rock bank. Check, bubba. And now Bishop H6. And you calmly say, see, you were excited for nothing because he doesn't have a chance. That is white. Because he's got it blocked. 
You already see it. Yeah, I quit making it more dramatic than it is, even though it is absolutely fantastic. Checkmate. Look at those Bobby Fisher-like bishops. The bishop pair in conjunction with the queen. All of them pointing toward the king. And that outstanding rook on that open file. And his acquisition of targets. And his control of the center. No wonder... This guy won. So congratulations, Van Piertosa. Happier than I'll get out to show you the show the world your game and helping us instruct us on the backyard professor chess club fan fan club with the point is in the group in the forum. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. And yes, we're proud to acknowledge it and share your wonderful win with the world. So Anyway, now that is the close of this video, because I have rambled on enough, but I have given you what I consider to be, look, for chess players who are working on improving, on trying to uh, impress each other with our vast knowledge and fecundity and prowess in chess, and I mean, yeah, we all want that, but we're years away, well, some of us are years away from it, in the meantime, it never hurts to give them a proper attaboy and a thank you and say, hey, check this out. Don't tell me that studying the Grandmaster games doesn't work. I'm showing you other people's games as well as my own that's showing that this is how the Grandmasters do do it. And that's so fun. So it's a great thing to be part of, this chess around the world. It's absolutely sensational. So... Thanks for watching my videos. We will see you in the next Backyard Professor Chess video.